right, so we've taken our flow reg off of the nitrogen tank. All right, I think that we're not going to have any leaks on this, so I'm going to put the Schrader valves back in. And you want to make sure that there's no dirt or anything like that back on the actual Schrader valve. So we're going to go ahead and set them in, otherwise they won't seat properly. And you don't need this fancy tool in order to take Schrader valves out and put them in. It's just what I happened to grab out of the truck. You can just get a $2 one, and if you don't have one, you can get it even at a... Uh, Napa or Advanced Auto Parts or whatever. All right, so we're going to get the other one in. If this was an existing system with, like, say, we were reusing the line set or we're reusing the evaporator quill, you want to do a oil blowout first, which means that you're flowing nitrogen through one side and blowing it right out, out of the other line. All right, you'd want to start that first before even running a vacuum pump because the vacuum pump, uh, the micron gauge won't work properly. All right and you'll have like trapped air uh, in the line somewhere it's because of globs of oil that are traveling say like in the line as you have a vacuum it's just moving around and throwing your micron gauge off all right but uh, this is all new it's a new condenser new line set and new evaporator coil so we don't have to do an oil blowout all right and now we're gonna go ahead and connect our lines onto the nitrogen tank we don't need this extra line. All right, so we're going to take our service hose, which is our yellow hose, and we're going to connect that to the nitrogen. Now, how much can you pressure test this thing up to? And that's that's found on the rating plate on the inside of the evaporator quill, right? Uh, most of the time now, the evaporator quills are like 450 psi is their design pressure, um, but you don't have to go up that far just to do a leak check. That's up to you how far you want to go up and how much nitrogen you want to put in the system. Um, and old evaporator quills, that's the other thing. You don't want to overpressurize old evaporator quills because they have a lower design pressure. Remember, that's the low side of the system. So back then, you know, they really didn't think it was going to need to uh, hold that much pressure. And some of them are only 150 PSI or 125. That's crazy. You know, even, even though that the uh, manufacturer knew they could be used as a heat pump. So... All right, so our red line goes on the liquid line. All right, a blue line onto the suction. We're going to keep these valves closed. We're just going to check all of our ports here. All right, now we're going to go ahead and increase our pressure. And we're going to just go ahead and let nitrogen in. I prefer to just let it in both sides. I don't think there's a real big issue with that. I don't want to, basically, I don't want to be putting a bunch of force on the side of the TXV with the nitrogen, but that's just my preference. You don't have to do that. I usually like to get it up to nothing too crazy, maybe 75 PSI, and then I'll go inside, I'll listen, um, and just make sure that there's no obvious leaks anywhere. It's like I didn't forget to do something, you know, uh, or whatever. So, um, but we're at 75. I don't hear anything here. What we're going to do is we're going to put this pressure up probably at about 200 PSI, we're going to let it hold and we're going to spray down the joints that we did with bubble leak detector. All right. That's me on the regulator adjusting it there. All right. So. We're at about 200 PSI G, and we're going to go ahead and spray down our joints now. All right, we're going to see if that holds. All right, this one's a little bit lower. It's like 198. This one's at, yeah, they're both about 198. All right. All right, the design pressure is actually found on the reading plate, and it actually says 450 PSI G right there. Okay, 450 PSI G. Right, we're not going to actually pressure test it that high. All we need to do is we're just going to go up to 200. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and spray our joints down with bubble leak detector. So you can use it out of a little, a little can or out of the squirt bottle. The thing is, out of the squirt bottle, sometimes you get bubbles from the get-go um, once you get low. You know, the, the bottle, once the bottle becomes low, you, you, you turn it or whatever, and you end up having... Bubbles formed. Alright, we're going to let that sit on there for a sec and then we're going to see.
If you see a bubble, you can wipe it off. Spray some more on. You could also just let that pressure test hold, you know, for a longer period of time than what I'm going to be doing here. So, so you just let that pressure test sit on there, maybe 10 minutes or so, and then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to attach our vacuum pump and uh, evacuate the system. All right, so the inside is good. All right, since we held for 10 minutes, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just let the the nitrogen out. All right. Next thing you know what we'll do is we're going to let it out the yellow line. I don't like anything spraying out up this way, so we're just going to let it out this way. Make sure you don't shoot the rubber insert out. That used to happen a lot on the older hoses. We're going to open the lines up because we're going to have to have them open anyway for the vacuum. You don't want to attach the micron gauge all right, until all of the nitrogen is out. Well, I hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.